very hard to make predictions about the future. <laughs> so I cannot give a definitive answer, but there are very sharp questions, almost rising to the level of paradoxes in our understanding. And historically, whenever there was such a sharp conflict between different ideas, paradoxes between different ways of thinking about the same problem, when the paradox was resolved, it led to very deep new insights. And given that we have these problems, we have these paradoxes, and a number of smart people are working on it, I have no doubt that breakthrough will happen. This is on the theoretical side. Sorry, on the experimental side, there is a whole array of new experiments that are being carried out, and there will be new data coming from these experiments. And historically, again, whenever a new frontier was open experimentally, new results started pouring in because we look for things that we couldn't look for before. So I'm extremely optimistic about the future. I think either from the theoretical or the experimental side, there will be interesting results and there will be surprises. And given that these will be surprises, I cannot predict what they will be. Well, it's a theory. Uh, it's clearly consistent theory. There is a question of whether na nature used, uh, tried to use that idea. And it's not clear whether it used this idea one way or another or not at all. In the past, there were many examples of theoretical ideas which were invented in one context turned out to be totally wrong in that context, but turned out later to be fundamental in a totally different context. And the history of science is full of such ideas. And supersymmetry has all the intellectual structure and depth of such, a, such an idea, an idea that is clearly extremely deep with far-reaching consequences. I can mention one thing, it has already had huge impact on mathematics. Ideas that originated from supersymmetry completely revolutionized some branches of mathematics. Ideas that originated from supersymmetry turned out to have implications in condensed matter physics. This is the study of materials and their properties. As I said, in the past, whenever an idea turned out to have a lot of implications, that was a sign that this is a deep idea. My f one of my favorite examples is Newton when he thought about calculus. Newton invented calculus for the study of motion of bodies. Newton was interested in how bodies move, and, that, and this is what led him to invent calculus. That was great, it's a wonderful application of calculus, but over the years people found many more applications of calculus. It describes the motion of fluids. It describes the electric and magnetic forces. It's even being used in chemistry, outside physics, and even in the social sciences. So calculus is a very deep idea. I think that supersymmetry is kind of like calculus. It's clearly a deep idea. It has already had many applications, implications, and where exactly it will appear in nature remains to be seen. Probably not in the most naive way we first thought about it, we as a community. But I have no doubt that it will find its natural setting in nature.